All right, we're going to have the presentation of the colors now from the Horizon Science Command Academy's Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps, led by Sergeant Anderson. So please rise for the presentation of the colors. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red the bombs bursting in air through the night that our flag was still Thank you, please be seated. That was the Horizon Science Academy Junior Reserves Officer Training Corps, JROTC. The U.S. Army JROTC began in 1916 when high schools were authorized to loan of federal military equipment and the assignment of active duty military personnel as instructors. They're building tomorrow's leaders. So we thank you, Sergeant Anderson and the Color Guard from Horizon Science Academy. Can we give them a round of applause? And of course, many of you know who led us in the national anthem. That was Andrea Nelly. Andrea is the founding director of Contemp Opera Cleveland. In 2006, she took on the challenge of making professional opera accessible and affordable by founding Opera Per Tutti, Opera For All, now known as Cleveland Opera Theater, with a mission of bringing professional opera to Northeast Ohio's diverse communities. And in 2016, she founded a new company, Contemp Opera Cleveland. You can read more about the Color Guard and Andre in your program. So welcome to the 2017 induction of the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Tonight we'll honor six amazing people. They've made significant and lasting contributions to the cultural diversity that makes our city so great. Mona Log, Jim Creation, Basil Russo, Dr. Will Corey, Mariana Miller for her, her late husband, William Miller, and Sung Sam Kim. It's a diverse group representing the diverse ethnic heritages that make up our city and region. The heritage reflects India, Romania, Syria, Korea, and Italy, but the efforts of these people up here make them all important 
important part of Cleveland, Ohio, USA. We hope that the selfless stories of tonight's inductees will inspire a new generation of leaders and preserve the faith, food, costumes, music, and cultures of the various ethnic cultures to make Cleveland what it, what it is. Many of you have been touched by their lives, and you want to share this honor with them. A couple of busloads for uh, people coming in to share that honor with Basil, for example. Others of you may not know them personally, but to respect their contribution to the community. I want to express your thanks and show your support for our diverse and vibrant region. My name is Dan Hansen. With my sister Debbie, our mother Pat and I, we run ClevelandPeople.com. You know, that's the website that promotes and connects the numerous ethnic groups that make up Cleveland. I will say, if you're going to have a medical issue, this is a good place to have it. There's a lot of doctors here. There's cardiologists, there's hepatologists, we've got OBGYNs, we've got pediatricians. So this is a good place. And if things don't work out so good, we've got a funeral director. So, <laughs> kind of ghoulish, but we got you covered. I do want to thank Debbie. You know, with 500 people and everyone wants to sit next to their friends and their family, it's a tough task for the seating assignments. Um, so hopefully everyone can see and hear well, but can we give a round of applause to Debbie for her hard work at the tables? As I look out and I see Margaret Wong and I see Dr. Anthony Yen and some people from the Confucius Institute, there's an old saying that is claimed to be a Chinese curse, but actually it's not as they can tell you. It's, may you live in interesting times. And it's, there's no real history that shows this is a Chinese source for this phrase, but it's used ironically because the peace and tranquil tranquility of uninteresting times is preferable to the conflict and chaos, chaos that makes an era interesting. And there's no doubt that today we live in interesting times with all the ramifications that go with it. Advanced technology, the internet, 24-hour news cycles, and the like have presented us with a scenario unique in human history. Millions of refugees are looking for homes. Terrorists use methods from medieval to modern to instill fear and destroy. Weapons range from guns and bombs to swords, chemical gases, and even vehicles. In many ways, the world is a mess. But thankfully, the situation in Cleveland is much better. The 120 or so ethnic communities represented in Cleveland are a model for the rest of the world. For example, in the Cleveland Cultural Gardens, the Turkish Garden is being built around the corner from the Armenian Garden, the Pakistan Garden near the India Garden, Russia near Ukraine, Ireland near Britain, Lebanon and Syria near the Hebrew Garden, and so on. In Cleveland, people from groups come together for events like this celebration. Cleveland interfaith events bring together Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, and others. You will see all kinds of ethnic people at the Cleveland Asian Festival, at One World Day, at the ICC Win Multicultural Party, the Cleveland Museum of Art International Community Day, and other events from Global Cleveland, the American Nationalities Movement, Cleveland Council on World Affairs, the Confucius Institute, of course, ClevelandPeople.com, and other organizations. And it's fun, and it makes you feel part of something bigger to take part of events of your own heritage. But it can be eye-opening and even life-changing to attend to different groups' activities. So we encourage you to join the 40,000 other people who visit our calendar on ClevelandPeople.com every month to see what's going on and attend some of those events, discover something new. Learn about your own culture, experience, love it, enjoy it. But some of these other cultures that make up our diverse community can make your life and experience so much richer. So by these different cultures, it's not only richer, it's a more interesting time, and it's for real, not ironically. So we'd like to thank our sponsors for helping make this event possible. The diamond sponsor is Audrey and Albert Ratner. You'll notice they're not in the book because of some travel issues, but Audrey and Albert Ratner are the diamond sponsor, and we thank them. Gold sponsors are Global Cleveland, Case Western Reserve University, and Dr. Whale Corey. Bronze sponsors, International Community Council Worldwide Intercultural Network, or ICC Win, Margaret W. Wong and Associates, and Richard Pogue. And we have table sponsors of Alex Machaski and Associates, August Pust, Cleveland American Middle East Organization, Cleveland Council on World Affairs, Cleveland Museum of Art, Confucius Institute, Friends of FICA, Mona and Harjit Alag, 
Sudarshan Sate, and the Vietnamese Cultural Garden. So thank you to all our sponsors for helping to make this possible. We'd also like to thank our helpers tonight, Ruth and Rich Kreppage. The table is crazy, 500 people bustled at the same time, but hopefully we got you all in in the right place. So Rich and Ruth Kreppage, Pat Muggridge, of course our mom, Pat Hanson, she's the glue behind it all. Um, we have photographers here, Tim Ryan, Ed Oshaban, Anjan Ghost, and Harry Weller. So this is the eighth year for the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. And you can read about in the book what's coming up. We'd like to introduce our incorporating board members who are here tonight. So if you guys can come up, and, and Debbie, um, Steve Owendorf, Mike Miller, Bill Carney, John Lewis, Debbie Hansen. Sadly, we lost one of our incorporating members this year. Albert Seymour passed away. And we're working to not only fill Bert's spot, but to add more board members and specific committees, such as a physical presence for the Hall of Fame and for some big event for the 10th anniversary. So I see Steve and Debbie coming up. I don't see John, I know he's here. I see Bill hiding back there. Um, these are the people to talk to if you're interested in being on a committee or being on the board. Just want to get them a little recognition because they go to the meetings and do the hard stuff while I get to stand up here. So there's Bill Carney, John Lewis, Steve Owendorf, Debbie Hanson, and I'm on the board too. We lo like I say, we lost Burr to pretty much irreplaceable. Okay, remember those faces. Now, one more thing before we get into our blessing and invocation, and Father, you can start making your way up. We have many previous inductees here tonight, and we'd like to recognize you. So when I call your name, please stand and remain standing till the end so we can all see you and give you some applause. And in no particular order, Jean Bach, Jenny Brown, Margaret Wong. Stay, stay up, Jean. I don't, Jenny, are you standing? See, just because you're in the Hall of Fame doesn't mean you get a good seat. <laughs> Margaret Wong, Eugenia Stelarsic, Carolyn Balog, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Meisner, Ernie Mahaley, Irene Morrow, Nacy Panzika, Mayor Ralph Perk, represented by his son, Judge Ralph Perk Jr., Ratanjit Sande, Dick Russ, Dr. Jaya Shaw, Yawa Ryan, Paramjit Singh, Anthony Yen, Dick Pogue, Jim Foster, Ken Kovach, August Pust, Jerry Quinn, Bob Haas, Jose Feliciano, and Lex Machaski representing his father Alex who is traveling. So there's 24 previous inductees here out of about 56 who have made it uh, for the entire Hall of Fame. So <laughs> congratulations. So dinner will be served after a brief blessing from Father Remus Gramoff. Father, where are you? There he comes. Yes. Father Gramoff is from St. Mary Romanian Orthodox Cathedral. He came to the U.S. as a graduate student in 1980 from Romania. Among other roles, Father Gramoff serves as curator of the Romanian Ethnic Art Museum in Cleveland. So after Father's blessing, please enjoy your dinner, and when we're finished, will induct the 2017 class. Father? He always forgets the Romanian festival in August. But uh, I invite all of you. Well, um, forgive me, I was about to, to invite you to stand up. If you are of the Orthodox faith and you want to stand up, uh, please do. Uh, in the Orthodox Church, we uh, are recovering now after the Feast of uh, Resurrection, and it was beautiful that we all Christians celebrated together. In saying this, I certainly I am mindful that we have uh, here uh, many friends who are non-Christian, uh, to whom I convey my peace also. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who have passed us from death to life and who want all men to come to the knowledge of the truth, 
who appointed angels to guard and guide countries and cities and blessed leaders among all nations, we fall down and we praise your most holy name that is exalted above all things. O oh, our thrice praise God, with humbled hearts and faith, in your infinite providence, we offer thanksgiving for the representative of our ethnic cultures honored this evening. Together with many other peace-loving people of all nationalities, races, and colors who worked in harmony to edify this city of Cleveland to serve the needs of the less fortunate and embody the ideals of our nation, they endeavored for the greatness of our forest city and for the creeds of our all-embracing American nation, and for this we salute them, O oh Lord. We bow our heads to you and entreat you, O oh God, to bless the food and the drink of your servants and make us ever mindful of the needs of others. Grant us this evening to be radiant and embrace one another. Show us how to ever say, brethren, to those that love us and to those that hate us, for we are all your children and citizens of our great na nation. Grant us to ever stand united in the love of our country, so that in oneness of mind, by sound faith and the genuine love, we may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. For yours is the power and the glory, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen, and peace to all those who are non-Christian. Poftă bună! Enjoy the dinner! and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart is a sea race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Okay, so let's get to the fun part of the evening now. We're going to induct the 2017 class of the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Everyone always asks, how do you get into the Hall of Fame? Well, the criteria is in the book, but you have, basically you must make a lasting and significant contribution to our multicultural society here in Cleveland. It could be for a particular community or for the broader community at large. But you have to be nominated, and here's the commercial. It's like voting. If you don't vote, you don't get to complain about who's in office. So if you don't nominate someone, you can't say next year, oh, there's no, people from my heritage here or so-and-so didn't get in. So the voting is free and easy. It's at clevelandinternationalhalloffame.com. You can start voting tonight for 2018. It's not voting, it's, it's, it's nominating. And then, yeah, it's not voting. And then what happens, like this year we got, again, about 150 worthy nominations. These names are sent to all the previous inductees, about 56 now of the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Next year, you six will get the list too. You will whittle that down with us. We'll get it to a smaller committee, work on it, work on it, sweat, blood, sweat, and tears, and come up with an amazing class like this. It shows how worthy these people are to uh, come out on top of these other 150 worthy nominations. So other people want to honor them too. Each inductee tonight will get a proclamation. They'll be able to wallpaper their, their rooms. We have proclamations for the inductees from Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson, Cleveland City Council, courtesy of Council Zone, Ohio State Senator Tom Patton. And Tom, I saw you back there. 
um, Governor John Kasich, Congresswoman Marcia Fudge, Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, Senator Rob Portman, Senator Sherrod Brown, Congressman David Joyce, State Auditor David Yost, County Executive Armin Budish, and Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine. So all of you, they wanted to congratulate you and you'll get certificates from all that. You'll also receive your official Cleveland International Hall of Fame lapel pin. You see a lot of the inductees wearing that and you'll get your award. So what happens is we call up the inductor, gives their remarks, not a bio, that's in the book and on the webpage. The inductor then uh, gives the award to the inductee, they pose for the photos, looking at Ed first, and the new Hall of Famer speaks. So let's get started. Debbie, you want to get the ball rolling? It is such a great honor to see all of you here for the, the eighth induction of the uh, Cleveland International Hall of Fame. And I am thrilled to be able to start this with inviting August Poos to come up here. August is going to induct Bill Miller, and in this case, his wife, Mariana. August Poos himself was inducted into the inaugural class of the Hall of Fame back in 2010. His long career as Ethnic Affairs International Relations Advisor and Leader started with Cleveland mayors, then the governor, then the senators, and eventually President George W. Bush. He has earned more awards and recognitions than we can count on, including the 2002 Citizen Diplomat from the National Council for International Visitors. My pleasure to introduce to you my friend, August Poos. Hello, Cleveland people. This is the picture of how the rest of the world should see what good city, Cleveland city, is all about. It's Cleveland people. And the reflection of this Cleveland people, it's right here at the podium today. This are the jewels that we can put together and call it Cleveland Mosaic. This is the work of art of the Cleveland. And today, when we're talking about Cleveland people, let's go back two decades or more to remember how we have met each other, where were we when we met each other, and who was the person who introduced us to different cultures and different people. It was Bill Miller. He was the one who wrote about us, and if we did not know, all we have to do is read his column in a print dealer. We learn about events, where and how and who. He was the one who made us knowing each other and learn about our place in the city, a history, our neighborhood, our churches, our community. But to look at that, not only that he was a lifelong promoter of Cleveland and the one who knew Cleveland very well, I would like to paint two little pictures of Bill Miller which illustrate so much of the man he was. Remember our All Nations Festival. They started right here in the front of this building on a mall between this hotel and City Hall. He was the master of ceremonies. He knew the people and we listened to people coming on a stage and listened to accordions, tamboritzas, sitars, trumpets, and of course, and on top of everything else, pipes and drums. So there he was introducing the people of Cleveland to the people of Cleveland. But they're not in comparing to what he did in downtown, in Playhouse Square, on the top of the stage of State Theater. 
This is where he introduced the groups, the best of our performing groups, on a stage where he played an important role of preserving state theater and theaters in Playhouse Square, which then later on became the pride of Cleveland and some of the best theaters in the nation. He fitted in because he saved and worked on a theater's restoration, preservation of theaters. He knew the people and people who came on the stage perform what Cleveland was at the best. It was a comic presentation of Cleveland. But to know Bill Miller in a personal side, especially as our dear and my dear friend, let's go back to summer festivals in Cleveland, neighborhood church community festivals, and oh yeah, of course, there were beer festivals. Picture this, Oktoberfest, beer festival. And before all the dignitaries came on the stage, there was Bill Miller right on the front stage. Before all the judges, mayors, uh, governors, even the president came on the stage, there was Bill Miller. In one hand, he had a beer stein. Another hand, he took off his hat. He put it over his heart and start singing, God bless America. That was our anthem, God bless America. And today that blessing is also with us. I would like to, on behalf of all of us, show our appreciation and our gratitude to Marianne Miller, representing the family, Mark Miller is here, her son, that on behalf of all of us, we can extend our sincere gratitude and congratulations to the family and to remember the Mill Miller with God bless America and to us people of Cleveland. God bless you. Mariana Miller. Diana Shatsi, we love you. <laughs> I love you too. Turn the Oh, this way? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is yours. Oh, great. Thank you. Oh, you want the picture? Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Yeah, do I put this down? Okay, yes, that's good. Um, they sprung this on me very fast. I didn't know it was the first one here. But anyway, thank you, August, for your wonderful, warm introduction. I can actually feel Bill, feel Bill smiling. <laughs> he would have been so proud. And thank you, this whole organization, especially Debbie Hansen, for this wonderful event and for this honor. I feel very privileged to accept it for Bill. He would have been so proud. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. And I have met some people again tonight that I haven't seen for 20 years. It was wonderful. It was just so great to see all of you again. And thank you for coming. And I also want to thank the organization for making this possible and all the work they do, especially Debbie Hansen. And I want to th thank my late friends for coming and uh, my son, Mark, and his beautiful lady, Mary. And Mark just came here to settle for a new life in Cleveland. 
he was in Seattle, and I appreciate all your love and your support. Thank you so much. The other son couldn't make it, Billy in New York, but he's here in spirit. And yes, Billy, we love you too. So anyway, and last but not least, I want to thank all of the other inductees tonight. Congratulations. And I met some of them, and they're wonderful people, and they do a great job. So thank you for everything. And please enjoy the rest of the evening, since I'm the first. <laughs> I'm not going to make comments on each of the people, but I do have to say something because, because it's Bill and the uh, story of it, and I wrote about it in the book, but the last time that I saw Bill Miller was at a party that Margaret Wong threw. I see Margaret out there somewhere. But it was a, a holiday party, and he saw me, and he put his arm around me and started to sing Danny Boy, and he sang the whole song, just bur belted it out, top of his lungs, and everyone just stood and watched and applauded, and, and that was Bill Miller. He just, he was a, a man of the people, and uh, there won't be another one like him, so I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Okay, with Councilman Matt Zone, please make your way up. You know Matt Zone, he was first elected to City Council in 2001, represents Ward 15, which includes Detroit Shoreway, that's where he and his Generations of his family have grown up. He's a strong advocate for the arts, green building, alternative energy. Look what he's done with Gordon Square. He's chair of the council's safety committee. And last November, Matt got a, a national honor. He was elected president of the National League of Cities. And of course, as many of you Italians know, he's responsible for the annual Italian Heritage Month celebrations at City Hall. And Councilman Zone is going to induct uh, Jimmy Creation today. Well, on behalf of the city of Cleveland, I can't think of two better ambassadors for what makes Cleveland wonderful, the beautiful mosaic of people who call our home, than Bill, or than Dan and uh, Debbie Hansen. You two do a terrific job. <laughs> Father Grama, thank you for the beautiful invocation. So I, I have to reciprocate. Chemai Fach, that means how are you? And the response would be, bine, mean good. Uh, La mozan, many years. many years. So Father Grama, thank you for the beautiful blessing. Um, I do want to uh, honor and recognize a former colleague of mine who I've learned so much about the international community, my former colleague, uh, who's the president and CEO of Global Cleveland, Joe Simpson and Joe. And so it's my distinct honor and privilege to uh, recognize somebody who has been a mentor for me uh, since I was probably crawling around in diapers. Um, so following into the footsteps of his father to care for those in our community who are grieving, I can't think of anyone better and kinder and gentler than somebody like Jimmy Creation. It's such an ad admirable thing to do to follow in the footsteps of your, your parents. And Jim Creation is a dedicated father to five. Uh, his kids are here, Noel, Jason, Jonathan, Jesse, and Nicholas. And he was a loving and caring husband to the late Mercy. You know, Jim has always been a very deeply faithful person. He's been a lifelong parishioner of Our Lady Mount Carmel. He's so involved in every aspect of what that church does. And uh, his presence is always known. And in 1974, Jim's odyssey really began to unfold in his deeper appreciation and love for his Catholic faith. You know, risking his own life, many people don't know this about Jim, but it's in the book, Jim smuggled Bibles and catechisms into communist Romania. In 1974, he was a young kid. This is where he began his lifelong commitment to human rights. And at the International Human Rights Conference in London in April of 1977, Jim helped draft and signed a memorandum condemning the impact of the Helsinki Accords and its lies on the Soviet bloc countries. You know, this same memorandum was prepared and signed simultaneously 
by Romanian and Czechoslovakians by courageous dissidents who were later imprisoned for this act. He risked his life because he believed in a cause. For all of us could only follow our cause and say that I would put my own life before um, this issue just to raise awareness. So shortly thereafter, um, I began working at Creation Funeral Home, and it was a great job. I was a doorman. I learned how to say hello in about 15 different languages. <laughs> and not only a doorman, uh, I started parking cars. And Jim came up to me one day, he goes, you're only 15, you, you don't have a driver's license, you can't be grabbing people's cars. Like, Jimmy, don't worry, I got this. Um, but, you know, Jim has always been like a big brother to me. And he realized early on, with the recent passing of my father when I started working there, that there wasn't a better way he could impact my life than with giving me a job. And it wasn't just a job. Jim took an active interest in my education and my well-being. You know, Jim got me involved in the Cleveland JCs. Uh, he got me involved, very active, in the Holy Name Society of Our Lady Mount Carmel. In fact, encouraging me to run for office of that wonderful organization. And Jim saw something in myself that I wasn't even aware of. He would always tell me, he's been telling me this for over 40 years, he always said one day that I would one day rise to serve others. And I wasn't quite sure at that time, you know, you're 15 years old, what that phrase meant, but he had a lasting and still has a lasting impact on my life. So when I was first considering running for city council, one of my first meetings, of course, other than Basil Russo, <laughs> was with Jim Cration. Uh, in fact, Jim served as my campaign chairman, and he opened up many doors for me, and he still serves as my campaign chairman today. You know, Jim, I have so much respect for you, and in the two minutes allotted to me tonight, it's not adequate enough time for me to share with this wonderful group tonight how much I love and respect you. It's my honor and privilege to present for inductment into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame, James Creation. So I feel like I'm getting an Academy Award, and I want to thank the Academy. And actually, it's the former inductees for voting all of us unanimously. To our honored guests, thank you for being here. I have been blessed with tremendous mentors, just as Matt Zone said that I've been a mentor of his. I have been blessed with tremendous mentors. And I'd like to share with you a few of them. In fact, when you think about who my mentors were, according to Tom Brokaw, they were the greatest generation my parents and all the people that were my mentors. I would begin with my parents. We know that our parents are our first teachers in the home. My dad had two Purple Hearts in World War II. My mother loved him, raised two kids. She needs a Purple Heart too. <laughs> the other person that played a big part in my life was my parish priest. Being a young boy at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, Father Marino Frascati, who was the Renaissance priest, the visionary, of our neighborhood who began uh, the Detroit Shoreway and we're so lucky to have had someone like Matt Zone continuing that effort. Today Detroit Shoreway is looked on upon the whole country as a model for how a city should be in, in the neighborhoods. That priest that was my mentor was a young seminarian in Italy uh, before World War II and he fought the ugly face of fascism by Benito Mussolini. When the war was over, the communists thought that they would take over Italy. And he fought the ugly face of communism. And the communists in Italy, in Rome, had a tree where my priest would hang because of his fighting against them. Of course, we know the communist government never did take over, and we were blessed to get Father Marino. He's the man that asked me to smuggle Bibles into communist Romania and cheered me along in my life with all the work I did for human rights, and I am privileged to have had such a priest. Now I have to talk about another parish priest, Father Vasile Hadigan, the Romanian Orthodox priest. I'm half Italian and half Romanian. Father Vasile Hadigan 
He had a church school when my brothers and I and my sisters were young. We had to go to Romanian school on Saturday. We had to learn how to dance in Romanian, sing in Romanian, speak in Romanian, and pray in Romanian. Back then, we didn't want to go to Saturday services. But I'll tell you what, today, we're so happy that we had Father Vasile Hannigan. He was also on the board of the International Services Center, which I have served for many years. And he pushed me to be on that board. So I bless his memory. William F. Miller. You know, it's one thing to have something to say in your community. It's another thing to have somebody that will publish it in the plain dealer. William and Beth Miller was our man, and we bless his memory. Also, we had in our community Peter Lukacs, who was the president of the All these people are dead, deceased. So if I miss somebody, nobody can yell at me unless I get bumped to heaven. <laughs> but anyways, Peter Lukacs was the, uh, the publisher of the Romanian newspaper, the oldest. America, called the America. Cleveland is the oldest community, has the oldest community of Romanians in America. The first Romanian Orthodox Church, St. Mary's uh, Romanian Orthodox Church, the first Catholic Church, St. Helena's, and 65th, both founded in the Detroit Showway neighborhood. So we're proud of that. Thank you. So Peter Lukacs ran the paper that went all over the world and when we talked about what was going on in Romania during the, the horrible times behind the Iron Curtain, the Romanian people living under communism, Mr. Lukacs gave me a platform. So I'm grateful to this very day and bless his memory. Next, I'd like to remember some of the people in Cleveland that were my, like my godfather and godmother. I'd have to say George Dobria, who many of you know, George Dobria from the Romanian community. Beautiful man, fought for our culture. Uh, another person who some of you may not know or remember, Stella Zanoni. What a princess in our Italian community. And we have wonderful Italians now carrying that torch, like Umberto Fideli, our Basil Russo, Matt Zone. Just a beautiful continuation of this beautiful Italian culture, of which I'm proud that my mother is of. I also want to remember some of those people that were on the board with me, again deceased. Joel Holzer who's the German Donnerschwaben, who through his work built uh, the beautiful uh, uh, Linnell Park on Columbia Road for the German people. Joe Holzer was on our board, worked so hard. Bless his memory. There's somebody here that's living I want to mention, Irene Morrow. Irene Morrow was on the board. She pushed me to be chairman of the board. For the eight years I was the chairman, Irene Morrow supported me every step of the way. I owe a lot to Irene Morrow. Thank you, Irene Morrow. I'd like to recognize, I'm almost done, I'd like to recognize my brother Joe, who's been my partner, supported me through the years that I did, went to Paris, went to London for human rights, and also was on the board for so many boards, actually, and Joe was always there covering me at the funeral. I want to honor my brother Jack, who spent 13 years in China and has worked with the Chinese people and continues his work with China. So I respect my brother Jack. And now, three people really important to me, and one of them is Bishop Anthony Pilla. I was privileged to be on a first name basis with Bishop Anthony Pilla. I had the honor of being the president of all the Holy Name Societies in the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland. I am so blessed to have had been a friend to Bishop Anthony Pilla. I mean, here, how lucky were the one million Catholics in this diocese to have such a shepherd. Another person I'd like to thank you. Another person I'd like to recognize is Alex Machaski. I'm sorry he's not here, but he's been a tremendous mentor of mine and someone who made a young man feel like he was important. And how lucky were we, were we to have that crazy Serbian as publisher of the Plain Dealer who plays the, you know, the uh, Tamaritsan and is just one of us. He cares about all of our nationalities. And I see my good friend, Ed, Abby Mina, Abdella Mina, who was on that board with me. Abdella Mina, my hero, who straightened out all my understandings of the Middle East. Thank you, Abdella. I love you. And the next person I'd like to recognize is Sam Miller. For 30 years, for all the organizations I belonged to, belonged to and supported and needed help, Sam Miller, the humanitarian, the philanthropist of this town, 
He never refused me. Never. And you know it takes money to make this world operate. I bless Sam and I hope God grants him some good health. Sam was a tremendous man over the last how many years here in Cleveland. And now I'd like to tell you a little story about the International Services Center. We resettle refugees and we're still doing it, although I'm not chairman of the board anymore. When the Kosovo War happened, we had some refugees from Albania. It was a husband and a wife, two small children. They came to Cleveland and we got the husband within two days a job in a factory making $7. We got the two children in public school. We got them a house to live in, to pay rent. We set up to pay rent for two months to help them get on their feet. After about a month and a half in Cleveland, the United States, I went to our offices. We, have, we teach them English as a second language. So I ran into this Albanian fellow, and I said, how are you doing? And his English wasn't too bad. It was broken, of course. He said, I am doing wonderful. I am now making $14 an hour. I said, oh my God, $14 an hour translates to $700 a week. I said, this is unbelievable. How did you do it? He goes, the place where I work hired my wife. <laughs> John F. Kennedy said, and this is important at a time which the Syrian people and so many people are looking to America to help. John F. Kennedy, our great president, said, the greatest asset that America has is its immigrants because they appreciate this country. And now, to close, I'd like to say this. It has been written, for those that much has been given, much will be asked. So if you can be a philanthropist like Sam Miller, continue to be charitable, because our charities and our organizations to make this town a great town, they need your help. If you're a young person and you're thinking about, you know, you don't have a lot of money, but you've been given talents, we need your talents. We need your help, we need your support, we need your time. Join some good charities and offer your time and talent. And the last thing I'd like to say, which I've based my whole life on, learning from my parents, is that it is in giving that we receive. Thank you. start coming up. Right. We actually, you know, we're going to be inducting Sam Kim now. And he has people here from Nebraska and Michigan and his son from Pennsylvania. Many people wanted the honor of inducting the very first ever person of Korean heritage into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. A lot of people asked for that. We had government and veteran leaders, as well as members of the, the Korean community that wanted to make the introduction. But Sam said, no, there's no better person to induct me. There's no better per person to do the honors than my son, he. And we're very glad he's here. Thank you. So uh, it's always difficult to go after some dynamic speakers. So um, you know, I, I I wanted to kind of reflect on the things that my father has done through the years. And uh, the the first thing I could think of is I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I, I'm a guy from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and so I just you know just wanted to make sure that I kind of stood my ground here, but. Uh, but no one threw anything at me, and, and I know I'm making myself known now, but um, I thank you very much. And, and uh, I, I have something written tonight, and, and if I follow along and, and stumble a little bit, it's because uh, um, we're honoring my dad. So uh, just follow along with me this evening. So good evening. Um, Debbie has mentioned my name is Ki Kim. I have the honor tonight of uh, inducting my father, uh, Sung Kim, into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Some may know him by his American name, Sam Kim. Either way, I am honored tonight for being able to speak about my father in behalf of the Korean American community in Cleveland, in Northeast Ohio, as well as my family. 
When I think of the Hall of Fame, I think of great sports heroes. And this is for you, Cleveland, like Jim uh, Brown, Bob Feller, or Roberto Alomar. Uh, but what does it mean to be a Hall of Famer uh, for the international community here in Cleveland? Well, it means you're honoring your heritage, uh, your culture, uh, while promoting it to others. For my dad, he fulfilled this late in his life, and he did it his own way. So let me tell you about a few of those accomplishments. Uh, my dad became president of the Korean American uh, Association of North, Northeast Ohio. Uh, he worked with the South Korean government to organize and run a homeless uh, veterans event by giving away jackets, blankets, as well as a, a warm meal. He also sponsored and organized a commemorative medal ceremony for Korean War veterans throughout Ohio. You see, my dad is an immigrant, and uh, he didn't speak the language very well. He didn't have resources, but he had perseverance. The belief in himself, the belief in his family, and most importantly, the guiding hand of God. My dad did not take up these endeavors from the beginning. He was reluctant. He lived in a small town, but he had great love for his community, which pushed him to be involved. Today, he is being recognized for all his good deeds and good works, but I must remind everyone, Hall of Famers aren't instantly created. They, are, they have innate abilities to be driven, to strive to be the best, to become better with time. That exemplifies my father. Dad, we love you. We are proud that all of you have accomplished, and congratulations on being inducted into the 2017 Cleveland International Hall of Fame. I have a problem. I have to speak English. <laughs> but I speak English a little better. Uh, thank you, everyone. And thank you also. Uh, Chicago is my friend coming over today. And thank you very much. And then also, Nebraska. It's $700 pay uh, the airplane ticket. And then, uh, People come in crazy. I say, don't want to come in. This is nothing. And then he said, well, let's come, come in here to try. And then, how about that now? Would you stand up? My family, my uh, friend, everyone there. And then, I want to, first time is a Korean here. You have to learn one language in the Korean. How about that? <laughs> I say, hello, how are you? So easy to say Korean. 안녕 하세요. Would you say the same time, everyone? 안녕? 안녕? Haseyo? Thank you very much. Would Dr. Zain come to the podium, please? Dr. Nizar Zain is going to induct Dr. <laughs> Wale Khoury. Dr. Nizar Zain is the Chairman and Medical Director of the Global Patient Services at Cleveland Clinic. He's the Chief of Hepatology and Medical Director of Liver Transplantation at Cleveland Clinic. He's also well known for his academic achievements and his active engagements at the local, national, and international levels. And Dr. Nizar Zain will induct Dr. Wale Khoury. Thank you for the kind invitation to, uh, to do this presentation. Uh, I, with all the strength and uh, wisdom of while, I think he made a mistake by choosing uh, me to do this presentation. <laughs> but in fact, 
to be truthful, in, on Saturday I spent almost the entire day trying to write remarks. So I tried to think of Wael, since I've met him, what I know about him, what he had done. And it ended up being probably seven or eight pages. And then I had to cut it down. So he's a very accomplished person. So it is very humbling uh, and a great honor to introduce someone I have admired for so many years. Uh, I have always aspired to reach uh, the standards he set and achieved himself. For that, I thank you, I. Uh, he is an extraordinary and outstanding in many ways. Uh, Dr. Khoury is blessed with an enormous self-confidence that had its roots in his knowledge, skills, and in his great intellectual capabilities. His mind has sort of unshakable poise and serenity that helped him remain unfazed and true to his principles as he represented and passionately defended the values of a fractured homeland uh, and a divided Syrian American society. At his level of modesty, elegance, and cultural refinement, he was above those fragilities. Uh, Dr. Wild Khoury was and continues to be the glue of our local diverse uh, Arab American society here in Cleveland. It was once said that the apple does not fall far from the tree. Uh, Dr. Wild Khoury and, uh, uh, and his father are undoubtedly made from the same cloth. Uh, the late Mr. Shahada Khoury uh, is an intellectual icon in Syria and across the Arab world. He was a leader in modernizing the Arabic language uh, for its use in contemporary sciences. Clearly, Wael was heavily and positively influenced by uh, his father's passion for knowledge and acquired many of his leadership skills. As a distinguished member of the local medical community for many years, Dr. Khoury served as the president of Cardiology Associates of Cleveland and uh, as the head of cardiology at Marymount Hospital for, I believe, more than 30 consecutive years. He was appointed as the Chief of Staff at Marymount between 1993 and 1995, and as the Vice President for Medical Affairs between 1995 and 2001. Arguably, one of his uh, uh, best accomplishments during these years uh, was his successful petitioning at the state level for hospitals with less than 250 bed capacity to have cardiac catheterization facilities. This achievement saved many lives when patients did not have the luxury of time to be transferred to larger medical centers. But that's not why we are here tonight. We are here tonight to acknowledge the many contributions of a man with an inherent and true passion for public service. Dr. Wael Khoury embodies all the values of public servants uh, working for the common good for social progress and equality. It was his passion for public service that led Dr. Khoury nearly 20 years ago uh, to join the Cleveland Council on World Affairs, CCWA, uh, with whom he shared a vision and a mission. Soon he became a member of the board at CCWA and ever since has actively worked to promote the Council's mission, and that is to inspire engagement in international affairs and world culture through education, public dialogue, and citizen diplomacy. Wael served as the chairman of the board of CCWA between 2012 and 2015 and resumed this position uh, again in 2016. As a chairman, Wael never ceased to ask how the council can reach out to more Clevelanders, especially the youth. CCWA's Mother United Nations program now brings uh, nearly 54 schools and 1,800 uh, students. Dr. Wael Khoury also put his heart and soul into ensuring that Cleveland gains an awareness and benefits of Syria's rich and colorful culture. 
Thus, he became the founding president of the Syrian American Cultural Council in 2005. Out of that endeavor grew the vision of having a Syrian garden among Cleveland great cultural gardens along uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Wael saw his dream fulfilled in September of 2015 with the official inauguration of the magnificent Syrian garden, a worthy a tribute to the deep history and culture of Syria. Recently, thanks to his tireless commitment to the concept of cultural gardens, Dr. Khoury was elected to be the president and uh, of the executive board of the Cleveland Cultural Garden Federation. In fact, I believe he started his role this month or last month or so. As we celebrate the accomplishments of Wael, it would only be a half-finished presentation without speaking of the woman besides him. Well, no, not you, but his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how the arrangement's going to be. <laughs> uh, his wife, Sausan, an accomplished uh, His wife, Sausan, an accomplished Clevelander on her own. Not only uh, is a symbol of elegance and class, Sausan, the inspiration and the energy that keeps Wael enthusiastically working on his many projects. This is apparent to all of us who were privileged to spend a lot of time with the Kuri family. Sousan is an educator by profession and a dedicated civic leader promoting our city through her own uh, work with the Cleveland Film Festival, among uh, several other societies and foundations. Sousan also ensures that Wael is up and working all night long. <laughs> this may be interpreted in many different ways. <laughs> But what I meant by it is that uh, if you know Wael Khoury, you always receive emails from Wael between 2 and 5 a.m. <laughs> and you can't help but wonder that this man ever sleeps. In fact, at night between 2 and 5 a.m., there are only two types of communication, uh, tweets from President Trump and emails from Dr. Khoury. <laughs> So we said earlier that the apple does not fall far from the tree. The legacy of Wael will undoubtedly continue into the next generation of Kuri family. Sosan and Wael are blessed with four lovely and equally as accomplished children, not only achievers by every academic standard, but filled with their parents' aspiration for civil and community service and for the honorable purpose of bridging gaps among cultures. Uh, two of the four children, Rana and Chadi, acquired PhD degree in Middle East Studies. A third, Hala, is a lawyer. And the youngest, Layla, is a rising sculpture artist. Uh, what a wonderful gene uh, pool. Uh, dearest Wael, it's truly my honor to present you tonight. Thank you. to ask Sousan to come on. Quickly, quickly. Come, come, quickly. Quickly for a picture. You keep him up at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fair to share the uh, award with Sousan. Thank you, Nizar. Uh, Nizar is a very accomplished uh, gentleman, and uh, you heard about his positions. And uh, he's a true friend. He's a great asset to the community as well. Uh, he's very humble, but uh, Nizar has so many contributes, and I'm sure he will have his turn on this podium in the near future. I want to thank uh, 
Debbie and Dan for creating this award in the city. Wherever there is cultural function in the city, Deb or Dan will be there. Thank you again. Congratulations to the distinguished uh, inductees. It's an honor to be uh, with you and with your company. As we celebrate today, Syria is in the grips of a terrible historic tragedy. As the cradle of civilization, with rich mosaic of people, cultures, and religions, Syria deserves peace now. The level of human suffering begs the world to work collectively on ending this madness. My family and I pray for peace every day. I want to thank the city of Cleveland that opened its arms and welcomed many Syrian refugees to its communities. A special thanks to Global Cleveland for coordinating these efforts. This organization is led with, by my good friends, David Fleschler and Joe Simperman. Where are you? Thank you. Thank you, thank you for all that you do in the city, for the Syrian community and all the other ethnic groups and immigrants. I want to thank my wife. She is really uh, the rock in the family. And she keeps me going. Uh, I want to thank my children for their support. I'm very happy that my mother is here today with us. She came from Syria to Minnesota. I have to tell you, I got my energy from her. <laughs> I want to thank my extended family for their great continued support. I look back at the last 40 years and feel fortunate that I landed in Cleveland thanks to my mentor, Dr. Mike Hanna. Mike, stand up, please. Yeah, thank you. Two months after uh, Sosan joined me, we had one of the worst snowstorms in Cleveland, January 1978. And we got stranded uh, on the 20th floor of Crystal Tower High Rise in East Cleveland for three days without electricity. Sosan was crying. Why did we come to Cleveland? <laughs> Three years later, after I finished my cardiology fellowship, we agreed that we either go back to Damascus or we stay in Cleveland. No other city will do. We recognized its potential back then and we're witnessing its transformation recently to a powerhouse in cultural, education, medicine, and industry. Cleveland Renaissance is breathtaking, and you should be all proud of it. In Arabic culture, home is everything. It's your family, your career, your community, and your cultural belonging. And you want to be in the best home you can build along these lines. My professional home has been Marymount Hospital, a great hospital in Garfield Heights, part of the clinic system, a medical facility to be proud of with great staff, personalized care, and family atmosphere. Thank you, my friends at my <laughs> My community home has been wonderful. A great number of Syrian and Arab American physicians, hardworking with distinguished careers all over the city, raising strong families, and having a vibrant community, socially and professionally. I spent many years with them, and with similar communities across the United States, building up the National Arab American Medical Association, NAMA, holding international CME conventions and medical missions every summer throughout the Arab world. The cultural side of NAMA allowed me to host the greatest Arab poets in Cleveland. One of them was Nizar Kabani, the 20th century leading Arab poet, Syrian in origin. He had a memorable visit to Cleveland in 1994 and called it the City of Hearts. He wrote a, a poetic article, beautiful article, published it in, in London. He said, Cleveland and poetry are twins in their cure of the heart. Very true. His bronze statue graces the Syrian cultural garden now. My cultural home has been the Syrian cultural garden. When the idea started, our great community rallied behind it. 
under the Syrian American Cultural Council. We have the greatest board, the greatest group of friends. They're all over. We have the whole board of the garden, the Syrian garden here. Thank you all for being so supportive, so great in your dedication and enthusiasm. If I name some names, I don't want to miss anyone. Dr. Adnan Morani, Dr. Naim Farhad, Dr. Jamil, J uh, Jamil Dai, Mr. Jamil Dai, Dr. Nizar Zain himself, Dr. Ahmed Asha, Man Faris, Jamal Dai. So uh, if I miss anybody, I'm very sorry, but you're all great. We built a monument for Syria in the middle of Rockefeller Park. Its unique garden and its symbolism and engraving of Syria's history on its columns. So it is an open museum. The Palmyra Arch of Triumph, you see the arch, the three arches that you see when you, when you drive down Martin Luther King. That arch symbolizes Palmyra, was destroyed by ISIS a few months ago, and it is standing tall in Cleveland. I invite you to visit it. The cultural gardens are a great gem in our city. There is nothing like it anywhere in the world. I'm looking forward to playing a meaningful role in its future direction and growth. My international home has been the Cleveland Council on World Affairs for over 20 years. And Dr. Nizar Zain mentioned all the great projects and programs that the Council does. It's been a wonderful experience, life experience for me. Great friends, very dedicated to international issues, to peace, to harmony, and to education. We get great thinkers uh, addressing international topics. We get great international teams to visit the city and experience it. We have great leadership in the council. The CEO is Maura O'Donnell McCarthy. Stand up. Uh, and the president is Ambassador Heather Hodges. Please stand up. And we've had recently a very successful Global Impact Award program headed and led by the great Dick Polk. Dick, thank you again. Stand up, please. Everybody in the city knows Mr. Cleveland, Dick Polk. My civic home is Cleveland, a great city of culture, of devoted communities, of wonderful Midwestern family values, and a hospitable city for the world. My dream is to make it a sister city for Damascus in the near future. Immigrants have been the backbone of this country, a fact that should not be forgotten. Just reflect on your families and communities. Just look at the faces of people in big cities and small towns, in high-tech companies to farmlands, and from hospitals to universities. In the middle of the current political debate about immigration, I'm confident that Cleveland will remain a model for openness, welcoming, and peace. The poet Khalil Gibran, the author of The Prophet, wrote an article in 1919, called it a letter to young Americans of Syrian origin. I believe in you and I believe in your destiny. I believe that you are contributors to this new civilization. I believe that you have inherited from your forefathers an ancient dream, a song, a prophecy, which you can proudly lay as a gift of gratitude upon the lap of America. You all know Khalil Gibran. I'm very humbled by this award. This award is for our community, our whole community. It's an honor and a challenge. Thank you all for being with me tonight. Okay, two to go. Basil M. Russo, everyone knows Mr. Russo. And like Sam Kim, people were lining up for the honor of inducting Basil Russo. Civic leaders, business leaders, and of course members of the Italian community, both locally and nationally, because as you know, Basil holds three leadership positions nationally in the Italian organizations. But Basil, like Sam, wanted to make this a family moment, and we think that's a great decision. So. Is it Gabriella who's coming up? Gabriella? 
So, they had to get two Italians to come up here, though, to make this a little bit longer. So, uh, I'm going to speak for half an hour. Gabriella's going to speak for half an hour. It'll be, it'll be great. Um, actually, I'm Joe Rosalina. I'm married to Gabriella. So, um, she asked me to come up and, and speak as well. Since we've been together for about 27 years now, uh, so almost being together for three decades in, in Basil's family, and for 20 years now, uh, working alongside him at our law firm. Um, when we researched this evening's event, I wanted to read a little bit about the Cleveland International Hall of Fame, and we read that it was established to recognize those individuals who have made a valuable and lasting contribution to our multicultural city and region and who inspire a generation of leaders. Uh, if you've ever heard Basil Russo speak, or heard others speak about Basil Russo, there are three common themes that you will more than likely have heard. Uh, one, his dedication to his faith, his family, and his heritage. Uh, with respect to his faith, our dad has already always placed his faith as the bedrock on which he has built his life. He proudly practices his faith and as a Christian makes every attempt uh, to be a better person for others. His family, I've always said that I, I thought I had the greatest dad in the world. I never ever thought I'd have uh, the greatest father-in-law in the world as well. Um, Basil truly puts his family ahead of everything and above all else and has worked endlessly with his wife, my mother-in-law, Pat, um, who's the greatest mother-in-law in the world as well, uh, to create really a, a wonderful, loving, and, and happy family. Uh, his heritage, and I have to say, before this evening, I really thought that, that Basil Russo was the only person that really cared about his heritage more than anyone I'd ever seen, but I, I was proven wrong uh, this evening. I'm, uh, Dad, you're still great, but um, <laughs> congratulations to everybody here. Um, when you see what he has done for his family, what he did for a, a law firm for 40 years, and, and the hundreds of thousands of people that he's uh, served over that time, I, I just couldn't think that there would be time for anything else, yet, uh, as, as Dan had alluded to, he's, he is the national president of the Italian Sons and Daughters of America. <laughs> you know, there's so many people here from the ISDA, and it's such a group that is so special and close to his heart, uh, one of the largest fraternal organizations in the country. Uh, he's also the, the, the president of the Justinian Forum Bar Association group, a group of uh, Italian-American lawyers and judges uh, here in Northeast Ohio that my wife Gabrielle and I have been a, a part of for the better part of 20 years as well. And he also sits on the board of directors at NIAF, the National Italian-American Foundation, um, another very successful and large uh, organization that preserves and promotes uh, the Italian heritage. So in today's world, we hear a lot of our leaders speak of similar values and ideals. Um, the difference that I find in, in Basil Russo is that he lives his life in accordance with that set of ideals and values and is really unwavering in his commitment to them. Certainly something that we find inspiring. Uh, our dad has inspired us to become better attorneys, but I think most importantly, and I know my wife agrees that it He's really inspired us to be better parents to our four kids, uh, better partners to each other, and, and better people uh, in, our, uh, in our community. Um, I wanted to take a moment um, to acknowledge my mother, Patricia. Um, she and my father will be celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Um, I <laughs> I have trouble believing that myself because they live each day to the fullest as if they're my age. So they inspire me to um, continually try and, and do as many things as I can in this world to help others and, and to do things for others. 
Um, my mom and dad um, have the most awe-inspiring union, and they epitomize what a beautiful marriage is. Every public success that my father has is shared equally by my mother. Um, she serves as his inspiration, his sounding board, and his rock. And um, they truly do everything together and um, experience all aspects of their life as, as a true union. Um, and so for my father's contributions to the people of Northeast Ohio, as a public official, as a judge, and a lawyer, and for his contributions to the Catholic Diocese of Cleveland and to the Italian-American community, both locally and nationally, and most importantly, to his family. I'm proud on behalf of my husband and I, our children, my siblings, Angela, Anthony, Joe, and their families. We're all proud to induct him into the Cleveland Hall of Fame, um, a city that he truly has given his heart and soul to and that he deeply loves. This is certainly an exciting evening for those of us sitting on the dais. I want to offer my congratulations to each one of these exceptional award recipients. I'm indeed honored to be placed in such important company this evening. I'm going to share some thoughts with you uh, in a few moments that are very important to me, uh, but everything I will say pales in comparison to the importance and significance that my family has in my life. I've been extremely fortunate to have uh, been married to a very special woman for nearly 50 years. Together we've been blessed with four exceptional children and 12 wonderful grandchildren. I'm often given credit for the accomplishments of our children, but in fact my wife has had a much greater impact on the final products than I have instilling in them good values and the importance of good education. My wife early on sacrificed her career by working to put me through college and law school. She chose to be a stay-at-home mom at a time when many women were wrongfully made to feel inadequate because they placed child-rearing over the pursuit of a career. My wife began college at age 40 the same year my sons did. She uh, became editor of the Ursuline College Literary Magazine, and she graduated magna cum laude. <laughs> Don't think that didn't motivate my children. Uh, they all had to work very hard to keep their grades competitive with their mothers. And so to my lovely wife, I say thank you for a lifetime I would not have changed one minute of. Those of you that have more than one child know that there is always one of the children in the family who gladly assumes the responsibility of taking care of mom and dad. Tonight, you met ours. Uh, to my daughter, Gabriela, and my son-in-law, Joe, thank you for always being there when Mom and I need you. Now I'd like to take a few minutes to share some personal thoughts with you. Each of us in this room has been blessed with our own ethnicity, race, and religion. I've always believed it is an important part of what makes us unique and defines each of us in a very special way. Sadly, 
In too many places in our world today, we find differences in races, ethnicities, and religions as being looked upon as something which should divide people, something which should cause people to be intolerant of one another, and something that causes conflict among people. How many wars throughout history have been fought because people uh, uh, were of different religions, uh, different races, or different ethnicities. Too many people in America today often look upon our differences as something that causes us to be suspicious of others, something that causes us to mistrust one another. But our country and our collective American heritage stands for something that is much more noble and righteous. We are a nation that prizes and values diversity. We have built our entire country upon our differences. America is the greatest country in the world because it's had the benefit of being able to pick and choose the very best from each of the wonderful cultures that have been brought to our country by immigrants from throughout the world. People of different backgrounds who all shared the common goal of seeking a better life for their families. And through hard work and sacrifice, each of our groups has made meaningful contributions to America that we can all be rightfully proud of. I believe each of us has a responsibility to preserve our respective heritages and to highlight the contributions each of our respective groups have made to our country. I also believe we further have a responsibility to respect each other's contributions and to learn from one another. I've spent a good portion of my life working to preserve the heritage, customs, and values my grandparents and other Italian immigrants brought with them to America and to keep that heritage alive in my children and grandchildren. A heritage that at its core is built upon supportive and loving families, a strong work ethic, and a devotion to our Catholic faith. I take pride in celebrating who I am and paying respect to my ancestors who helped to define me, just as I'm sure each of you celebrate your heritage and never forget those who provided it to you. Unfortunately, today it's becoming fashionable in certain segments of our society for people to promote the idea that there should be no such thing as hyphenated Americans. They frown upon the use of the terms African American, Latino American, Korean American, Italian American, or any other type of American. They argue we should all just be referred to as Americans, of course, in the context that they themselves choose to define that term. But next time you hear that argument being advocated, remember, what we are being asked to do is to erase an important part of who we are, the part of ourselves that makes us different, the part of ourselves that makes us unique, the part of ourselves that makes us special. I believe we should never let anyone rob us of any part of what makes us the person God created and intended each of us to be. And so I thank this wonderful committee for creating and maintaining this exceptional program that allows all of Northeastern Ohio to both celebrate and share the diversity that has made our community so vibrant and so exciting. And I thank all of you for celebrating our community's diversity with us this evening. Thank you. One last
last comment, I believe I forgot to make mention of the uh, members of the Italian sons and daughters who came out this evening. There are 125 people here representing the Italian sons and daughters of America this evening. There included in the group is our Ohio Vice President Marie Frank, our District Council President Joe Frank, along with many national officers and, and Lodge Presidents. To each ISDA member present tonight, I want you to know that I greatly appreciate and uh, support, uh, excuse me, I greatly appreciate the support you've extended me over the years and that you extend to me again this evening. My heartfelt thanks to all of you for, for coming out this evening. Thank you. Some people would think that if their last name began with an A, they would be first. <laughs> no. And I have two young men who are so well behaved sitting there waiting for Grandma. So I think it's time we induct Mona Alag. I'd like to ask Sudarshan Sathay to come up and join me. Sudarshan is president and CEO of New Concepts in Marketing, Inc., a full-service direct retail marketing company. He has both a Master's of Science in Chemical Engineering and an MBA, that's an MBA, in International Business. Besides running his successful business, he is very active as a leader in the Indian community. Mr. Sathe. Namaste and good evening. In India, the word Didi literally means an elder sister. But metaphorically, the word means much more. It signifies a go-to person for the younger siblings, someone who has a cool head and a lot of knowledge and sound judgment, in other words, a Didi has answers to life's questions. Every lucky family has one, and every immigrant community is surely fortunate to have one. Our Indian community's Didi is called Monala. For Mona, the involvement in social causes began at a very young age when a woman friend in distress asked for help. Then another one asked, and then another. That led eventually to the creation of Association of Asian Indian Women of Ohio, a support group for women in distress. Mona has been there at the inception of Project Seva, the word Seva means selfless service. Seva has provided meals, blankets, hygiene packets to countless individuals throughout Northeast Ohio. Mona has made a signal contribution to the India Cultural Garden where the statue of Mahatma Gandhi stands proudly on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. And of course, Mona has been an integral part of FICA, the umbrella organization of Asian Indians in Northeast Ohio. In other words, there is no effort undertaken by the Indian community in the cultural, philanthropic, or the service realm that Mona hasn't been a significant part of. Mona, your FICA family is proud of you. The larger Indian community is proud of you for being chosen for this honor. And I think Dr. Mohan Bafna, the immediate past recipient of the very same award, said it best when he said, and I quote, 
there is no more deserving person for this honor than Mrs. Mona Alak. She is a diligent and humble pillar of the Indian community. Congratulations. <laughs> Mona, it is my high honor to induct you in the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Thank you, Sudarshan. I truly appreciate your kind words. If I may beg your indulgence, just for a moment, a shout out to my two grandsons here. My two dates for the evening, I got lucky, I got two dates. Our nine-year-old Sajan and five-year-old Karam. And of course, the other two grandchildren in California, Sameh and Aina. I call them my heart and soul. And the five-year-old wanted to know what his place was on the totem pole. So he said, what is more important, Nani, the heart or the soul? And I said, that's a bit complicated. I'll get back to you. And he looked me straight in the eyes and he said, you should not say complicated things. Now, if that's not a life lesson, I don't know what is. <laughs> when your efforts are noticed and acknowledged, it gives you an impetus to not only continue what you're doing, but to put a little more effort into it. And then to be surrounded by such dignitaries where in front of them my resume is just a footnote. I am so honored to be in your presence and to be counted in the same group as you all. Where we come from in India, it is not, first of all, my experiences are not global, national, or even statewide. My efforts and interests and pursuits have been just local, Cleveland, and that too, a very small part of Cleveland, the Indian community. My focus has just been in the Indian community, uh, and mainly for the women, young mothers and daughters, who for some reason or the other have fallen on difficult times. Where we come from in our culture, uh, you don't talk about your problems. It's taboo. I speak of rural India now, rural, not urban. And when you realize that that mindset of rural India has found its way to the United States, it's very troubling. And you see these young girls and women, mothers who are here, experiencing some of the same issues that they did back home. Uh, it tugs at your heartstrings and you want to make things a little bit better for them. Maybe one day they will all be able to rise up and say, it is not my fault that this thing is not working, my marriage is not working, or something is going wrong in my life. It is not just my fault. To give you a small example, I got a call from an acquaintance of mine who handed me a phone number and said, would you please talk to this young lady? She doesn't feel safe at home. I spoke with her and I found out the reason she didn't feel safe was because she had three daughters and wasn't able to give her family a son and she felt that there was something going on and she didn't feel safe for her daughters or for herself. 
and she just needed a place to hide for a week till she said the storm blew over. I never thought anything of it. I got in my car. I was, what I came to mind was uh, a hymn from our holy scriptures which says, translated says, God give me the strength and the wisdom never to shy away from something that is right. I got in my car and I brought her home, the three kids and the mother, and much to the horror of my husband who saw our own two kids and three little girls under the age of seven running around in the house. And when I explained to him what it was, the good, decent human being that he is, all he said was, be careful, don't get into any trouble. A week later, I found out that the husband was truly repentant and he wanted his wife and his children home. There was no mention of son or daughter. He just wanted his children home. And I realized that such a small effort on my part changed the path of their lives. And now two of those young girls are in medicine and one of them is a lawyer. So how can you, how can you not reach out to them? How can you not put an extra effort to make a difference in their lives? A few years ago, a couple of friends and myself, Dr. Jaya Shah and Dr. Gita Gidwani, we formed a very informal sort of a group called Helping Hands. And what Helping Hands does is it provides anything from a ride to the hospital, a home-cooked meal when a spouse is unwell, a little bit of light housework if needed, somebody's sick, they can't do it. And believe me, we have gotten hundreds and hundreds of calls towards that end. One incident that will stay with me till the day I die was a young couple had moved to Cleveland just for a few months because his mother was on her last days. And she was so weak, she couldn't sit up and read from the Holy Scriptures, the same faith that she was from the same faith that I am. So the daughter-in-law called and said, uh, would you be able to come and read the morning prayers for her? Because she has not gone without that for a single day. It's a long prayer, it's about an hour and a half. But I said, okay, I would do it. Every day I would go there. For seven, eight days I went. And every day I went, she would, when she said bye, she would say, make the sign, see you tomorrow. And I went the next day, till on the eighth day, she sort of, you know, okay, that's enough. And on the ninth day, she died. The look in her eyes, the gratitude will always stay with me. So these are the kind of things we like to do to make life a little easier, a little more bearable for someone who has fallen on hard times. So be it the Federation of India Community Associations and Project Seva, or the Association of Asian Indian Women with its helpline, which still exists today, or Helping Hands. Wherever there is a need, we have a host of volunteers who will always always come through for you. So if any one of you knows of any family or an individual that has fallen on difficult times, please get, get, contact Dan Hansen and he will in turn get the message to me. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm blown away again. What, what an amazing group of people and 
you know, I think we all have stories about any of these people who have touched their lives. I know Joe Simperman, remember a few years ago when we saw Sam at 2100 Lakeside? As many people of Korean heritage, they are so thankful for the U.S. role in the Korean War in the 50s. They've never forgot the veterans and the things they do there. It's, it's amazing. And of course, Bill already talked about Danny Boy and his just being everywhere. Well, you know, at the, uh, the thing that impressed me most at the Syrian Cultural Garden, when you uh, unveiled the bust of Kabani, it wasn't all the dignitaries, the huge crowd, the cool bust and all that. You were beaming, and not because of the bust, it was because your daughter and son were up there. Your daughter, the artist, and your son reading that poetry, Kabani's poetry, it was, it was amazing. And every time I go to a, a Columbus Day event or parade or something, I, I thank Basil uh, quietly to myself because it's not Indigenous Peoples Day, it's Columbus Day, and this is the man responsible for uh, making that here in Cleveland. And, and Jimmy, I keep going back to a video, a recording he made when he was honored by the American Nationalities Movement on Communism. It's a primer that really, as we see things change with Russia and all, we should, we should all really watch that, you know, search for on YouTube for Jim Creation and communism. And Mona, she is just so hands-on. She's, like you say, she's on her speed dial. And we, we get so many requests and queries from the people moving here from, from India, and they want to know where to send their kids to school, where's a good temple or a Gurdwara. Uh, they need help, and like some of the examples, she, and Mona goes there. She goes to the airport. She goes to the neighborhood. She brings meals. She does the hands-on stuff that doesn't get you a lot of recognition. That's part of her Sikh faith. And this, these are just six amazing people. So I think we should all raise a glass and toast this new class, 2017 class of the International Hall, Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you to the committee for this great selection. You're here. Slancha or whatever, say whatever language.